Hi creators! Today's quilling video is a letter L with lilacs. So quick story, I was on a walk with my family, passing by all the lilac bushes in my neighborhood and wishing I had one. When my daughter says, you know, they look like the same flowers on our front bush. And I said, huh? That bush doesn't have flowers. So it turns out after living here for seven years, the ugly duckling bush has decided to blossom for the first time. And it's the very thing I wanted. I couldn't believe it. It felt magical. And so, Miracle Lilac Bush, this one's for you. The first thing to do is make a letter template. And this is a simple block letter with some pointy serifs added to the ends. Then I shaped some white cardstock strips, which are five millimeters wide. And glue them onto the background paper, which again is white cardstock. I'm using a light box so I can see my letter template underneath. And once my outline is done, I can switch the template to a crisscross pattern. These white strips are the same as what I used for the outline, which means they're thicker and stiffer than my normal strips. I'm going through a few rounds of cutting and testing to get the right length before I glue. And when I do glue, I put glue on the bottom edge and both the sides, basically wherever the strip is going to be touching more paper. Now it may not look like it, but this is momentous, guys. I'm trying something new. I'm filling the entire letter with this geometric pattern and then putting 3D quilled flowers on top. Oh yeah, now you're feeling the excitement. Putting flowers on top, that's why I need some beefier strips for the, for the crisscross. It was nice doing longer strips. Nothing but uh, tons of shorties in this direction. The one redeeming thing is that a lot of them are the same length. So I'm gonna get one good one and use that one to cut a bunch. Next up is a tight coil. I've got half a gray strip and a straight pin to roll it. Okay, so curl to prep it and then place the pin just below the starting edge and roll firmly down with your thumb. I finish rolling by hand and then glue shut. Just a small amount of glue on the end there. So the straight pin helps get a smaller hole in the center than my uh, slotted tool. Glue a tight coil in the center of each whole diamond. I'm glad I added these tight coils. Number one, it looks cool, and number two, it'll provide more support for the lilacs. For the flower petals, I've cut two millimeter wide strips from light purple cardstock. No, these are not one millimeter strips. These are twice as wide, and therefore twice as easy to work with and I will have twice the sanity left when I'm done. You wouldn't think there'd be much difference, but I find one millimeter strips require uh, relaxing music, a good night's sleep, and maybe even the promise of ice cream when I'm done. Someday I will join the big leagues, but for now, I'm going with the two millimeters. After rolling it tight, let it open up some. Then I'm rotating it so that when I pinch one side, the loose end is at the point. And 
and then glue that shut. Pinch the opposite side so it's slightly pointed and bend the pedal around your finger or the handle of a slotted tool or a paintbrush. To keep it intact, put a layer of glue on the back side and let it dry, like maybe 30 minutes to an hour. So when it's dry, bend it again and it'll hold the shape pretty well. And to glue them together, I'm going to put glue on the bottom mm, pointy half and then glue two petals together and angle them inward. And do this with the other pair. Actually, you want to do this with about a billion petals till your fingers are raw and your brain begs to do something different. Let the pairs dry a bit and then you can glue them together. If there is a hole at the base of the flower, that's actually a good thing. So um, don't squish the petals totally closed. And then let the flowers dry overnight. And you want them like totally dry before you manhandle them. Now for the flower centers, I'm making a small marquise by rolling a short strip of yellow. Three millimeter wide. I've never used so many different widths in one project. Let the coil relax, glue shut, and pinch opposite sides. Cut a segment of floral wire. I'm guessing this, this segment of wire is like four to five inches long. Thread it through the marquees. And bend it down. All right, back to two millimeter wide strips. I'm making simplified flower buds using this gorgeous dark pinky purple. Roll it up. Then let it open ever so slightly. This will make it a bit easier to squeeze one side into a teardrop shape. To attach the wire, I'm going to form a small loop with these round pliers I've got. Straighten it out. And then I'm going to dip that loop into some glue. And then set it on the teardrop. And then like the flowers, let these dry overnight. Time to put the yellow centers in. Do you see that hole in the lilac? Uh, we're gonna put some glue down there and then slide the wire through that hole. Now if there is no hole, just grab your quilling needle and make one. It's usually easy to poke through. Tug the wire to get the center nice and snug and touching the glue. And then let that dry about an hour. Nice, it's starting to come together now. After it's dry, bend the wire at the base of the flower so the flower faces front instead of up. and get a small group of lilacs to tape together. Grabbing one of the wires and wrapping around the others helped keep things in place. Otherwise they get so squirrely, twisting and turning and driving me nuts. This tape is floral tape. So if you've never used it before, it's not like normal tape. 
The trick is to stretch it and that brings out the stickiness. But still, getting it started is kind of a pain. So I stretch it, wrap it once, and pinch um, the bottom with one hand, and keep wrapping with the other. Also, angle it downward to wrap it faster. And once you get to the end, you can just tear the tape. I'm going to put together some of the buds like I did with the lilac flowers and make little small bunches. Now the bud connection to the wire, it will hold, but it's not super robust. Grip the bud and the wire loop if you need to uh, turn it. I did have a bud come off, but I glued it back on and I didn't have a problem with it afterwards. But um, yeah, just want to be careful when you're adjusting it. And it's just a matter of arranging the lilacs the way you like them at this point. So every time I add in another bunch, I tape it together so it doesn't keep moving around. And this is also when it's good to have some singles just in case you um, you know have some small gaps that you want to fill in. So I did a few groups of buds at the top and now I'm trying to widen out the bunch of lilacs at the bottom towards the bottom. And then I decided to add another little bunch with buds towards the side. Okay, I debated, I debated about leaves. Should I add them? Should I not? What kind of leaves should I do? And in the end, I decided to try doing some paper leaves because it would just be so easy to connect a wire and position the leaves with the lilacs. Anyway, so to make the leaves, basically using what I've got, which is green cardstock and acrylic paint. First, I cut a long rectangle out of the green paper and fold it in half. Spread the bottom half with glue. And place the wire in the middle and then I press the paper down. And I flip it over and press that side down too. And then give that um, maybe about 30 minutes to dry. Yeah, so I've got a real lilac leaf there. That's what I'm using as my model. So pointy top, and kind of a wider, more bulbous bottom part. Yeah, it's a little bit stylized, but that's fine. I'm shooting for like kind of a dark green. So to get that color, it's mostly yellow, some green, and then a drop of black. And paint both sides. So the color matches pretty well. But as the creator, I am making the executive decision to lighten the leaves, make them a brighter green. Although I have to say in the end, I think either color would have worked just fine. Okay, now I'm using some yellow to paint on the leaf veins. And I'm trying to make them, you know, really thin lines. But even so, they do really stand out. So I am going to take some of the darker green paint and uh, use the dry brush technique where I, I basically get off a lot of the paint. I just have a little bit left on the brush and then I um, go over those yellow veins to just make them a little more subtle. And this is also kind of a cool part about doing these flat paper leaves is that you can kind of scrunch them up, you can shape them. Awesome. And attaching the leaves with the floral tape. This is obviously way too long for the L and I need to figure out how to shorten it. 
So here's what I ended up doing. I marked where I want the branch to end, like half hoping I could just cut through the entire thing, but no. Then I taped right above the mark as um, some added support. Then I used my sharp scissors to cut the tape at the mark and then remove as much of the tape below it that I could. Then bend a wire and cut. Bend another wire and cut till I get them all done. All right, so I've got some pokey exposed wires there at the bottom. So I want to do a final taping, definitely covering up those wire ends. And after going around the bottom a few times, just tear the tape. That was a little funny. <laughs> I guess that also worked. So um, there was kind of an obvious tape line and to get rid of that, I just use a toothpick to um, push in in between the, the bunches. Yeah, not terrible. There's the back side. Okay, okay, so I had in mind the entire time that I would just glue this whole bunch to the letter and now that I'm doing it I'm really actually kind of nervous. <laughs> Is this actually gonna work? Okay, big fat line of glue. Get it placed right on the letter. I had a problem, like I was pushing on one end and then it would make the other end pop up. So I needed something heavy to keep both ends down and I didn't want to be holding it like <clears throat> overnight. I mean, you might notice I've also, um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's me checking out the placement, making sure it's going to be lying flat. Yeah, that's uh, those are my my weights to keep it down while it dried. Okay, guys, moment of truth. We're gonna see if this glue method worked. <laughs> Pick it up gently. Tilt it ever so gently, too. It didn't come off. It's staying, guys. It's staying. Yay! Yay, I'm so happy. Yeah, so it's like resting on some of the definite crisscrosses and the dots, especially that one at the bottom where the stem is thickest, so that's pretty good. Woohoo! Yeah, thumbs up for sure. <laughs> Alright guys, thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. Like, this has been a little more figuring things out and designing as I go. Wait, isn't that what I always do? I'm excited for uh, the 3D flowers. I'm excited for the geometric pattern. I have been totally into patterns lately, guys. But thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>